Yeah, so we had the opportunity, we were invited to, um, and we we're pleased to be invited to re report our data on the longer term follow ups of the Juliet trial, which is a trial of patients with advanced large cell lymphoma, uh, which there's probably in the United States 25,000 cases per year, which we do try to treat with primary therapy and expect that there's a 60% of patients will be cured. It's those other 10,000 patients and what will happen to them. The standard of care is to take them onto autologous transplant. But if they relapse after autologous transplant or if they fail to get disease control allowing them to go forward, we all would have anticipated a very poor survival under 15 to 20% at two years was the predicted historical outcome. This is a new therapy where the drug itself is the patient's own lymphocytes that are genetically modified with a gene that is, um, will ex allow their own immune cells to express a target receptor that will redirect the T cell population directly to the tumor target. Um, the data early on were very exciting with you know, good high response rates. And this has also been seen with other you know, similar chimeric receptor T cells populations. But I think the most important thing to see now is as we get longer and longer from the time of administration, patients are having sustained remission. Over half the patients had either complete remissions or partial remissions with this therapy. And of the patients who received complete remission, the vast majority, over well over 50% are remaining with sustained remission over time. Why is that important? I think for us, it's the fact that, again, when you look early on, if you look early, there can be differences in clinical trial design. There could be the question of selection bias, that you just pick patients who are going to do well, you know, ordin as ex expectantly. When you wait this long and you see, you know, excellent outcomes with patients remaining alive, now double what we would have predicted with any other appro salvage approach. Um, you start to see, realize that you're changing the natural history of disease. And as far as you know, what we have done since there, we do know though that these cells have unique toxicities. You know, there's a standard toxicity of any therapy that you can administer, risk of infection, transfusion needs. But these have, when you administer T cell therapy, there are some unique characteristics of a toxicity associated with how fast the cells grow. People can have an inflammatory condition. They could have you know, even a um, oxygen need and, you know, a, 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 a blood pressure and vital sign instability. We call that cytokine release syndrome. There's also a second unique syndrome called an encephalopathic syndrome, which is associated with delirium, encephalopathy, confusion, sometimes to the point where patients will be completely unresponsive and obtunded. It also could be as simple as headache or just feeling a little dizzy. Well, the one issue between the various clinical trials that have been undertaken so far is they've used different grading scales. We have now gone back to the original data set from the Juliet trial and using the more consensus um, grading scales of the, used by the two other largest studies performed to date, you know, sponsored by uh, Kite as well as Juno and with investigators from those two studies as well as from Juliet. They've regraded the data in a blinded fashion from Juliet to try to create a more consensus grading with the other grading scale for toxicity. We've, that has happened. It does appear that as you do this, as you perform this great regrading, that we're able to now look and compare across studies to the best of our ability toxicity. And it does seem that we may be seeing less of the um, less degree of CRS and less degree of some of the you know, advanced delirium as opposed to seen in at least one of the other studies.